New at four, we're taking a deeper dive into the sentencing of pro-life activist Lauren Handy. She was found guilty of being part of an illegal blockade at a DC reproductive health clinic. And this morning, Handy was sentenced to nearly five years in prison. Our digital investigative reporter Jordan Fisher is with us now to bring us more insight on today's mm -hmm. sentencing. We know that you've been on top of this story for years. You were in court this morning when the judge handed down that sentence for Handy. It's a lengthy sentence. I mean, it's longer than a lot of the January 6 defendants who, of course, the cases that you covered. Can you help us understand how the judge got to this number? All right, Adam. So there, there's two things going on here. One, this is what they would call a, a case of first impression. And what that means is that this is the first time anyone has ever been sentenced for these two specific charges that Lauren Handy and her co-defendants face. One is a violation of the FACE Act, which is a, a, a law from the Clinton administration that makes it illegal to obstruct entrance to a clinic or a church. Uh, the other one is a conspiracy against rights. And if that charge sounds familiar, it's because former President Donald Trump is also facing it in his election fraud case. But that says that it's illegal to try to prevent someone from accessing a federally protected right, in this case, access to the reproductive health clinic. The second thing that's going on is that Lauren Handy has multiple prior convictions and pr jail terms for obstructing other uh, clinics including several in the D.C. area. So we're talking about this particular case around the obstruction of getting into clinics, but many viewers may remember her as the woman who had this, you know, huge number of fetal remains in her Capitol Hill home, and this was back in 2022. But we should make it clear that this case does not relate to the case involving those fetal remains. That's right. We broke that story back in uh, early 2022, yeah. um, and we've been following it ever since. Um, no charges have ever been filed in connection to those fetuses, either for, or fetal remains, excuse me, either either for, um, you know, the people who, who claim to have found them or, or any allegation of wrongdoing by the clinic. The defendants did try to enter them into evidence in the case because they say that they had an honest and earnest belief that there was what they have described as infanticide going on in that clinic. We should say that there's never been any evidence to support that. There are no allegations of that that have ever been substantiated. But they said that that was what drove them into the clinic that day, and they wanted the jury to see that. And the judge presiding over the case said it was inadmissible. Mm -hmm. And she described a video that they wanted to show about the uh, the doctor who runs the clinic as, and this is a direct quote, propaganda. Okay. Mm. So do we put a period on this now that the judge has issued the sentence in this case? Do we know what might come next for Handy? And she had eight co-defendants. Right. Several of those co-defendants are still awaiting sentencing. In, in fact, there's one in court right now being sentenced. Um, obviously, what's next, like in any federal case, is the appeal stage. Now, the D.C. Circuit has already ruled numerous times on this statute, the FACE Act, and they've upheld it repeatedly over the last two decades. So it's very unlikely that these defendants are going to find success there. But several of them, even from the beginning, have said that they have hoped this case will eventually result in a Supreme Court challenge that could see this, this law overturned. And the reason is they believe it violates their First Amendment, freedom of speech, and religious rights to protest outside of these clinics. And you spent a lot of time in courts. I know we've got to let you go, but you said there was a moment when she was let out and, and most of the people in the court stood up and gave her a standing ovation. That doesn't happen every day in courtrooms. That's right. It, it is a little unusual. And, and I think, well, I don't have to think. They, they cheered out your hero, Lauren, um, you know, to... Uh, people in her movement, Lauren Handy and her co-defendants, including one who's named Joan Bell, who is a longtime member of this movement, going back to the uh, Operation Rescue Days, are heroes. They are putting their literal lives and freedom on the line for what they believe. And so, um, you know, the judge who presided over the case said the difference between um, peaceful protest that has long been supported and protected by the law in America and what Lauren Handy and her co-defendants were convicted of is that they were found to have committed an act of violence. Mm -hmm. They obstructed a right to access to these clinics, and they did so violently. And that's, she said, that's why you're being punished today. Well, those right. firmly held beliefs are going to cost her. She'll begin serving that prison sentence right away. Jordan Fisher, thank you.